as you grow older, certain things happen to your body, and one of them is bleeding. Uh, bleeding from the bum. And I was bleeding a little bit, and I just said to Joe, what do you think? She said, go to the doctors now. So I did. I said, well, I've been uh, bleeding from below. She said, um, do you mind if I examine you? And I said, no, not at all. She examined me with uh, uh, the finger. No pain, no problems. Three, four, five minutes of, of examination. And she said, right, I need to do a blood test today. And she rang me the following day. Uh, she said, uh, I need you to go for an MRI a week later. And remember, this is only a week later. I had the MRI and I said to the um, uh, MRI people there, do you know what it is? She said, no, we don't. I said, right, okay. Another week later, um, I had a telephone call with a sister in the oncology unit in Shrewsbury. And she said, uh, Martin Ord. I said, yes, that's me. She said, um, are you all right to talk? I said, yes. She said, is, is your wife with you? I said, no, my partner is. That's good. That's good. You have cancer, Martin. <laughs> what? I didn't know what to do, what to say, uh, why, where. But um, I said, okay. And she said, you have cancer of the prostate. Um, we don't quite know what it is yet, uh, but there's definitely a cancerous situation there. And at that time, to be quite honest, nothing hit me. I thought, well, okay, um, we'll get through this. Not a problem whatsoever. And again, another week later, I, I had a letter off them to say, uh, I've got to go for a biopsy in Shrewsbury. Wow, but were they nice? They were fantastic. There's another few guys there having the same biopsy. And I began to realize this doesn't happen just to me. This happens to lots of people. And uh, the one guy, and he said, what do you think you've got? He said, well, I've, I've got prostate cancer. It slowly began to dawn on me then that everything was beginning to look towards prostate cancer. And I'd had a, a, a discussion with a doctor beforehand. He just said, look, you know, we've got to get this, do this biopsy. It's not going to hurt. Two or three days later, um, a telephone call from a Dr. Srihari, who is the, one of the senior oncologists at the Lingen Davis Centre in Shrewsbury. He said, um, is your partner with you, Joe? Because he knew all about her. I said, yes, she is. And he said, right, um, what I've got to tell you now is, you know, is a little bit daunting, but we will sort it. This I promise. Then he said, um, you've got grade five cancer. I said, what's that mean? He said, it's about the worst you can get. And it's aggressive, which means the lymph nodes uh, are being attacked, if you wish, or the cancer is going through the wall of the, the prostate. And I, you can see me now. I didn't know what to do. I felt uh, helpless, I think. But Joe was there, and she said, come on, Audi. I felt a, a numbness, I, I suppose. But then Joe just said, we, we can do this, we can sort this, we can fight this. But it still gets to you because you're human. And the word cancer is, is synonymous with death. And you always think, you know, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm coming up 74, 75, what the hell am I going to do? And you're just, you're, just, you're just absolutely helpless. You don't know what to say, what to do, why, where or when. And I kept it to myself. And I, I probably... Probably um, went a bit backwards, I suppose. I spoke to Warren and Gibbo. And they said, why don't you just sort of come out with it? Tell the boys tell the rugby club. To be honest, I, I didn't want to. I just didn't want to. I wanted to keep it to myself. I wasn't embarrassed or anything like that. I wanted to keep this one to myself uh, and just get on with it. And I told the club and the um, support from the club is amazing. It's, it's like being back in the regiment. It's a family. It's my family. It's our family. It's Oswald Street Rugby Club. And every single person in Oswald Street Rugby Club, sorry, supported me. And it's what it's all about.
but I'm on my way now to recovery. I'm on my fourth month of hormone treatment now. It makes you feel very tired. You don't know when you're going to feel tired. And you won't fall asleep there and then. I sweat. Peeing two, two hours every night. That's a real pain, that is. I've got a two litre water bottle that I pee in, which means I don't have to slip down the bloody corridor in a dream and miss, miss the pan. But the hormone treatment, I've got to do it until uh, 2024 now. But I'll beat this. I will beat it. So that's my story. You guys out there, you have to get tested. The reason why we're doing Ruck Over Cancer is for that. Stuart, Warren, Gibbo, all the people in Ruck Over Cancer, totally, totally outstanding. And I love you all, simple as that. I'm now um, going to go into radiotherapy. Your uh, PSA going from 9.4, 10 down to 0.45 that's absolutely fabulous it means the hormone treatment is working and uh, he then said you've still got cancer so we have to beat that and he said the, the grade you have the aggressiveness of the cancer and we'll kill it we'll sort it you've got eight weeks of it and it's going to be hard you're going to need people with you you're going to need support so that starts as i said on the 15th of uh, april and it goes through till the 8th of June. Now our aim now is to um, make sure that everybody like me, younger, get checked. Because if you don't, you're gonna die. Just get checked early, uh, even if there's nothing wrong with you. They want you to go in and get checked. If I hadn't have been checked and I hadn't have taken notice of the fact that I was bleeding, I'd be in a hell of a state. If you've got prostate cancer and you don't get it sorted, you'll die. Simple as that. Two things. One, I'm being supported by the most tremendous people that I've ever known in my whole life. And that's Oz Street Rugby Club. And two, the people that are treating me are, are just absolutely outstanding. In a word, superb. And I, I put my whole trust and my life in their hands. And they must see hundreds of people like me but they make me feel special. And they make everybody else feel special. That's what it's all about. You know, no more, no less. <laughs> My outlook is positive, obviously. Because if I don't, you go downhill. It has changed dramatically. Uh, I intend to enjoy life. I intend to get well. I intend to travel again. Watch my rugby. I intend to make coffee and tea and toast again. But I'll beat this. I will beat it. Simple as that.